Dara, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so, so excited to be able to interview you. Uh, to kick it thank off. Thank you for having me. I'm yes. really excited to oh be here. Oh my gosh. Yes. So to kick it off, can you tell us what is carbon and why is it so exciting? Well, Carbon is the world's leading digital manufacturing platform. We use 3D printing technology to accelerate product innovation and manufacture at scale, making breakthrough products that you could never make before. It's amazing. And your current role is you're the CMO of Carbon. Yeah, Chief Marketing Officer. Did you ever expect to do marketing in startups? Was that even a role that you had thought about when you were a student or just getting started? In your well, career? definitely not when I was a student. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was born and raised in Nigeria, so I didn't, you know, kind of thought you'd be a doctor or a lawyer, maybe an economist. I, I definitely didn't, you know, really know much about Silicon Valley or, or, or really think about the tech world. It wasn't until after, actually after I graduated from, um, from Harvard when I was working on Wall Street, I started to lose colleagues to like Silicon Valley and hear about, you know, fame and fortune and how people were changing the world. Uh, that I finally got really inspired uh, to kind of learn more about the startup world and ended up kind of coming um, over to the Bay Area to go to Stanford for business school and ended up getting sucked into tech. So. And then how did you find Carbon from business school? Well, I actually, I had a couple different jobs. Uh, the job that I had before now, I was a chief marketing officer at GE for GE Business Innovations and GE Ventures. And GE invested in Carbon. So that was how I got to know Joe DeSimone, who's our CEO, and the amazing executive team. And I was just really inspired by what Carbon is doing, you know, creating a new way to make products, products you could never make before, that are trans have the, you know, are transforming lives, industries, and the world. That purpose is so inspirational to me. So uh, when I got to know Joe and the team and got the opportunity, I was really excited to come on board. Yeah, and when you talk about transformative products, you've taken on a lot of really cool uh, products like the Rydell NFL sports helmets, the Adidas 3D printed shoes. Like, how do you continue to push the envelope in crafting these very creative branding and marketing strategies? Well, I think the wonderful thing is that, you know, our technology is a platform, right? It's software and hardware and materials. And so our software allows you to design and, and, and engineer products that you couldn't make any other way. Uh, our hardware allows you to actually manufacture those products um, and the materials, these unmatched materials, these elastomers allow you to create materials with unique properties. And so what's really exciting about the breakthrough products, whether it's the Adidas, the midsole that goes into the Adidas 4D shoe that returns energy or the Riddell diamond helmet that dissipates energy to improve player protection. These are just really interesting, exciting projects. So we kind of, our whole marketing and, and, and really storytelling strategy is around highlighting these pro products, showcasing the products, putting the products and the technology front and center by communicating you know, to the consumer why it matters and why it's different. You talked a bit about enablement, um, especially with companies, but I'm curious, how do you see, you know, you've spoken about your values around empowering others and lifting others up. H how do you incorporate that into your, your role and your philosophy? Well, I think, you know, I think my underlying kind of principle is really like, how am I, what am I doing to leave the world a better place than where, where I found it? That's kind of what sort of gets me it. going. It's what, and I think there are a couple of, when I dissect that a little bit, it's like, am I doing unto others what I want others to do unto me? Am I creating and adding value? Or am I just taking? Am I, you know, giving? Or am I just someone who's just like receiving from the world? And so I think about that a lot and I think about how can I create an enabling culture um, not just for myself, but also for others. Whether it starts with whether it's my team or my company, or even ways I can impact people that you know uh, are not maybe inside the four walls of the company that I'm working at. How do I create these enabling environments um, to allow others and myself, right, to really add more value and contribute and make the world a better place? That really excites me. I love that. I love that. So on a bit of a lighter note. We wanted to do a quick lightning round of questions. Um, so to kick it off, uh, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? 
I do my spiritual practice. So I do some meditation, some reading of the Bible, some prayer, and really try to ground and center myself. Because I feel like I need to replenish myself before I go out into the world. I cannot give what I do not have. Totally. What's the best part of your job? Best part of my job is getting to work with the world's smartest people. I mean, whoa. Like, I must be the only person I harbor without a PhD. That's not true. But, <laughs> but it's, it's getting to work with really amazing, talented, gifted people who are just trying to make the world a better place, who are so motivated and so, you know, inspiring. That's that's honestly, like, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better way to spend my time. So on that note, <laughs> who's a woman in tech that inspires you? Well, I'm inspired by a lot of women in technology. It's going to be really hard to pick. I think one woman that really inspires me is Sue Siegel. She's the Chief Innovation Officer of GE. Um, she has done a lot uh, in kind of the healthcare and technology world. And she really inspires me because she's someone who imagines a better future and then coalesces and brings people together and unlocks potential to make that future real. So it's really exciting. She's someone who inspires me. And so how do you hope to inspire the next generation of female technologists? Well, I don't know that I'm that inspirational, but I think what I try to do is, you know, I think for me, I try to make sure that people can see and, and, and people can see that it is possible. If you're a woman, if you're an immigrant like me, if you're a person of color, if you're, um, you know, an underrepresented minority, I think being able to see that, oh, that's just Dara. If she could do it, I could do it too. Um, making yeah. myself accessible, making sure that people can can see themselves in in positions of power. I think it is really important. Not that I'm powerful, but but at least you see are. that okay. Someday, you know, I can also be a C-level executive at a technology company. Someday, I could be working in an emerging tech that's disrupting an entire industry. Someday, I could do that too. If I can leave people inspired and a little, that's just Dara. I can do it. My work here is done. Well, you're already doing an incredible job. Um, last one is, what is one piece of actionable advice you have for aspiring women in tech? Chase opportunities that create other opportunities. So I think that, you know, when you're looking at an opportunity, really figuring out how will this, what are the different pathways that this opportunity opens up for me? I think that's really important because the fact is life is not linear. Like it's a bit of a roller coaster, a zigzag, a crazy jungle gym. Yeah. And so the more you are in opportunities that allow you to pivot, allow you to change, give you that flexibility, I think that's a really powerful thing. Wow, thank you so much for that. We're so inspired to be able to hear from you. Yes. Thank, thank you for, you for having thank me. You. This was really fun. Enjoy this chat.